things I remember about my mother. I was, sadly, I lost my mother when I was three years old. She died of pancreatic cancer in 1949. I had an older brother who was 10 years old and a younger brother who was 15 months old. Uh, but things, I, I do have some memories of her and, and, and feelings. Uh, I, I can remember her voice. I can remember her nurturing. And I can remember the smell of our house. Uh, because she baked all the time. She baked all the bread that we used. I, she had a first uh, a niece who was my first cousin who was 16 years old who helped us along the way growing up and, and I, I still stay in close touch with her. She's my probably my closest relative other than my, my two remaining brothers. <laughs> but uh, after a couple of months uh, after my mother died, uh, my father heard about this lady in Macon whose husband was killed in World War II in France. And she had a, a daughter that was, let's see, how was, she was eight, eight years old. And she was looking for some type of work to help take care of children. And she came and interviewed and, and wound up moving in with us with her daughter, Anna Mead. And her, her daughter's name was Frances, and they came and stayed with us. And uh, after several years passed, and she, she and my father wound up getting married. Uh, we grew up as uh, like us, like the Walthams. Uh, we never called anybody Step anything. If they had one son who became my youngest brother, Pat Taylor, he's uh, six years younger than me. We moved around a lot, but. Uh, my, the mother that I had, uh, my stepmother, um, she baked a lot of stuff too, but she made candy, the divinity candy that she was famous for. She'd make divinity candy and put it in packages, and my two younger brothers, who were little and cute, would take them up to the corner and sell them in about an hour and make all this money, and I had to go out and cut grass all the work all day in the heat. And, uh, but it, it was okay. Everything it turned out well. I was fortunate enough to have my, my mother until um, 1998 when she passed away. My older brother uh, passed away two years ago, and I always ask him things about our mother because I don't remember, didn't remember very much about it. But he passed away from Alzheimer's disease, and as the disease to, progressed, he remembered stuff and, and told me a lot of things about my mother. Uh, actually, some that would have happened before I was born, but that was, you know, one small, nice thing that came out of that. My father died of Alzheimer's also in 1970, but uh, I was very fortunate to have two two wonderful mothers and I have a great family, and, and we're, we're a very close family, and, and uh, I'm just thankful for where I am in life. My mother just taught me so many things, that example and the way she lived her life. She saw the beauty in the most simple things in life, a, a beautiful flower, a bird chirping and caring for her young, a, a beautiful sunset, a glorious rain shower, and a simple picnic on the farm. And for all of this, she always thanked God. She was the best grandmother, too. She taught our children to appreciate life's simple things as well. Um, my sisters and I grew up seeing our mother and our dad share everything they had with others, the beautiful vineyards, fresh produce, shell pecans, which now I realize was a gift of gold, and her delicious baked goods. And she always taught us that it's not important what we have, but what we do with what we have. And uh, she sacrificed so much for us girls and for others. And she always saw the best in everyone. Uh, Marsha Votar left me the sweetest and timely message this week saying, I was so much like my mother. I certainly will never measure up to that but it was the best compliment ever and meant so much to receive it this week. And this is mine about my mother. She had a special kind of beauty that came from uh, the love that shines out of someone's eyes when they're happy and when they glow with pride. She had such a good pride in our family. She had an honest beauty that came from her heart that was generated because she loved and she gave that love freely to her children and to her husband and to her neighbors. And she was that way every day. She was just a wonderful mom and she set an example 
for me that I hope I lived up to when I raised my children, and I hope my children live up to as they raise theirs. Many, many years ago, there was a couple, Sue and Emmett Coleman, who, would, who wanted to have a baby. They were both only children, and they wanted deeply and to have a baby or several babies. But this process was more difficult than they came to find out. So after much testing and on both their parts and many doctor's visits, the doctor finally suggested that they go the route of, a, of adoption. So they were a little uh, dis much, much disappointed, I should say. And, but down, but not out. So they went the path of adoption and got into the paperwork. And even into the late 1950s, there was still a lot of paperwork. So they covered the dining room table into uh, all the paperwork possible for adoption. And uh, for months, they were knee deep into adoption papers and what happened, but they found out that my mother was pregnant with me. Ta-da! And so they were very, very excited. So the pregnancy went along and then it became a difficult pregnancy towards the end and she ended up staying in bed for several months. But she said she didn't care because she would do anything the doctor said in order to have a healthy baby. So fast forward to November the 11th, Veterans Day, 1958, which was my mother's birthday. Um, a midnight that night, rolling into November the 12th, which was my birthday, she gave birth to a healthy six-pound baby girl on November 12th. Um, so as I grew and my parents both said that that was the happiest day slash night of their lives. So as I grew up, I I couldn't have had a better role model than I had really for both my mother and my father. My mother was the most kind, loving, fun to be with, um, humorous person that you could know and you can ask anyone around Barnesville or anywhere that. She showed by example she loved her family, and everyone knows my father and mother and myself were all only children, so we didn't have a whole lot of family. But she showed she loved her family, she loved her friends, her church, and her community. Several years after I graduated from college, her health started to decline. And even when she was in bad health, she worried about other people, she cared about other people, and how they were doing instead of her own self. Uh, as her illness progressed, um, she was in and out of the hospital so many times, but even during those times, we had some of the best visits, the best talks, the best times, and even the best laughs, if that could be possible, but we did. Then in June of 1990, my mother passed away. That would be 30 years ago next month. And she was 61 and I was 31. And it was the hardest thing that I've ever gone through, but I made it through somehow and survived. To this day, I am just trying to follow in both parents, but my mother's footsteps. I, too, love my family, the, the few and far in between that I have, my friends, my church, and community. I'm just trying to be the person that she would want me to be, 
And this Mother's Day, I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the past mothers and all the present ones, and just Happy Mother's Day to everyone.